My name is Todd Melman. Uh, this is Reef Systems Coral Farm, and we are in New Albany, Ohio, just outside Columbus, Ohio. We're like, like I think 20 minutes from downtown, northeast of Columbus. Yeah, so we have uh, the retail location that you're standing at, and then we have our online uh, site at reefsystems.com. We've been here for 15 years. I started a lot longer, like in 1999, I started a service company that led into the coral farm um, and the uh, koi as well. We focus on uh, live coral. Um, we do bring in mariculture, which is animals that were raised in the marine environment, um, and they have CITES permits for them, and the biggest one that we do is clams. So we bring in clams from reputable sources. They are not wild clams, meaning they are mariculture. They respond for the aquarium trade or food. We bring them in at small sizes, and then we raise them up. Uh, but coral is definitely the main focus. Um, and then koi came years later. We actually spawn koi, we sell koi, we clean koi. We do bring in a small percentage of Japanese fish because there's, there's people that want Japanese fish over domesticated, which I completely understand. Um, but we also breed from Japanese bloodlines and they're completely isolated. Um, so uh, it's not a huge focus of my business, but people that know us know if they want to clean fish that they come to us because we're not, intentionally selling animals that came right out of our ponds and right into sale. And then we also sell aquacultured fish from other reputable suppliers. So um, we've been doing business with a company, for instance, called ORA, Ocean Reefs and Aquariums. Uh, we only buy fish from them. And there's another company as well that we buy fish from, but we really focus on their fish and isolating them and keeping them separate from all the wild fish that we bring in. Uh, so that we can offer another, everything's about aquaculture and clean. So we're only trying to achieve those, uh, those specimens here to be able to resell them. We are a true saltwater coral farm. I don't know how many species of corals we have. I, I started like with the website, we started to actually like start listing everything. But to give you one example, there's a, a coral called Manapura. We have 20, three to 27 different uh, species of monopora. So that's just one. Like the pastelopora that we have, I probably have like 12 different species of that coral. And it's really difficult to keep track of them all. Soon we're actually gonna try to do DNA testing and genotyping on them for universities um, so that we can actually offer them to universities for research and whatnot. Um, or projects that they have going. However, I have animals I've, I've had since, you know, like for 25 years, I have specific species that I've had that long and a lot of them. And so, yes, my animals came from the wild at one point, they had to. Um, and then we keep them, clean them, isolate them, quarantine them, and then, uh, and then we produce them by, you know, dividing, by fission, literally cutting them. Some of them actually spawn in our systems, but um, that's the, that's the true thing. Even live rock, I mean, this industry is different than a lot of the industries that you're covering, but live rock, for instance, is something that used to be harvested from the wild, which takes away habitat. And so when I started this company in 15 years ago, I've never brought live rock in. Uh, we culture it from land-based rock that was never taken from the wild, from quarries, uh, mined down. Some of it used to be in Utah. Some of it was in Florida. Some of it was even in here in Ohio. Um, but we culture it and sell it so that people can have, you know, biological filtration for their tanks. But that's the real key. The real key is that we keep dividing. We keep bringing corals in from other customers. We still bring in some wild uh, colonies, but it's a small percentage. It's less than 3% of what we actually sell. In a nutshell, that's basically it. It's a true aquaculture facility. We don't bring animals in, cut them up and say we grew them. We're literally growing them year after year after year after year. When you get into a hobby like this, it costs you a lot of money and time and energy. We try to explain to people the pros and cons of what they're going to be doing. We try to shoot them in the right direction um, and give them all the resources that we have. This hobby for people is all about problem solving. And that's actually where I wanted to educate people. That's where it all started. I wanted to educate people so people didn't go through what I went through. We do the education. We follow up with it. We consistently are there for the customer to try to fix the problems that they keep creating and explaining to them. And then one day, 
the person walks in and it's not even, it's like, how well is the tank doing? What are you gonna do with all your corals? They're bringing me buckets full of corals saying, Todd, I don't wanna deal with people online. I just like to have credit and like support my habit, which is what we talk about people being addicted in the hobby because it becomes very addictive. It becomes addictive when you're successful. So reaching those people and allowing other people to have similar results that I've had, that's, that's why I do it.